So multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system. So that's the brain and the spinal cord. It does not affect the nerve cables as they exit from the spinal cord and connect the body. So it's the brain and the spinal cord. It's a progressive disease. So it kind of gradually gets worse or changes over time. Um, it is a disease that affects young people. So usually patients are, when they have their first symptoms, most patients are between 25 and 40 years and it affects much more women than men. Um, in terms of what happens in the nervous system in patients with multiple sclerosis, you have two different things. So the first thing in the beginning of the disease, there are areas of inflammation of the nervous system. Um, of the brain and of the spinal cord, which then when you have inflammation in a particular area, it causes symptoms, but when the inflammation um, eases, the symptoms improve again. So inflammation, but also degeneration, which often happens later in the disease where the nerve cells gradually die off in a way. Um, and very often when this happens, patients gradually deteriorate. Um, but the, the severity of it is very variable between patients and we will talk about this later. Um, finally, in terms of why does this inflammation and why does this degeneration happen in the brain and the spinal cord of patients? Um, the reason is there's probably an interplay between many different factors, which all of them don't have a very strong effect, but they have to kind of, for each patient, there has to be a kind of um, specific combination of a lot of factors. If they work together in a specific way, the end result is multiple sclerosis. And we know that there are some genetic factors important, um, genes which each just have a small effect, but multiple sclerosis clusters a bit, just a tiny bit in families, so people are predisposed to it. But this comes together with environmental risk factors. And the ones which we know about is smoking. So smoking increases the risk of multiple sclerosis. Um, we know that sunshine and vitamin D levels are important. So a lot of sunshine and high vitamin D levels protects from multiple sclerosis and low vitamin D levels increase the risk. And we know that certain infections, um, there's an infection called glandular fever, are probably risk factors for multiple sclerosis. So not everybody who has glandular fever will develop multiple sclerosis, but probably all multiple sclerosis patients did have glandular fever one time in their life. So it's in summary, a progressive disease of the central nervous system, which is characterized, starts young in age, affects mainly women. It's common in certain countries like the UK. It's characterized by inflammation and degeneration, and it's caused by being susceptible a bit to it, but in addition to environmental factors such as smoking, um, infections like glandular fever, and um, vitamin D levels and sunshine. So, as I said before, you have multiple sclerosis is caused by inflammation in the central nervous system, which can happen anywhere in the central nervous system. So, depending on where the inflammation is, patients have different symptoms. Sometimes they may not even notice the inflammation that happens. Um, so anything can happen in multiple sclerosis. However, certain areas are much more likely to be affected. And we know that, for example, funny sensations, numbness, tingling, burning sensations, abnormal sensations are very, very common and often the first symptoms. So probably about 90% of people with multiple sclerosis at some stage in their illness have sensory symptoms. Um, visual symptoms are quite common, so there can be inflammation of the nerve responsible for vision, it's called optic nevitis, or you can, patients can have double vision, for example, so that's quite common, probably 50-60% of patients have this. And then 
problems affecting walking and mobility due to a lot of different causes are probably quite common. Um, so um, probably 70, 80% of patients eventually in the course of their illness have some kind of difficulties with mobility, um, but not everybody. Um, but as I said, any kind of symptom can occur, but those three symptoms are, are the most common symptom probably. So, as I said before, what happens in the brain in patients with multiple sclerosis are two things. The first thing that you can see is this inflammation. So we have areas of inflammation which comes and which goes. And the symptoms patients experience when this inflammation happens is they have a neurological symptom depending on where the inflammation is, which they develop, but then once the inflammation gets better, the neurological symptoms get better. So that's called a relapsed. So one type of multiple sclerosis have, is to have these relapses of neurological dysfunction, which often gets better, some, often completely gets better, or at least partially gets better. So that's called relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Most patients have this form in the beginning of their disease. However, in later stages, the degenerative process, which what I said before, you know, there's a process eventually that happens where the nerve cells just gradually die off. And what patients then experience is a kind of gradual deterioration of some functioning, sometimes mobility, sometimes other symptoms, which doesn't really improve again. And that's called progressive phase. And in many patients, you have a secondary progressive phase, which happens, you know, after initially having a relapse in remitting phase, so and then secondary progressive phase, probably about half of patients with MS enter this secondary progressive phase after, you know, 15 years of their disease or so. Not everybody does. So that's the most common type of initially relapsing, remitting, and then secondary progressive. A small proportion, about 10%, have a progressive phase from the onset, that's called primary progressive, so they never ever improve in their symptoms. And I think what to mention also in this context is that in terms of how well people are doing, you can also classify them. So um, there is a form of multiple sclerosis called benign multiple sclerosis that affects probably just about 10-15% of patients and we increasingly diagnose this. So this is a form where patients have minor symptoms and they always recover fully. So after 10 years of their disease, they only have minimal disability and they essentially live a normal life. Um, so that's probably 10 to 15% of multiple sclerosis sufferers. But on the other hand of the spectrum, probably also about 10% is a more severe form of multiple sclerosis where patients really deteriorate quite quickly. Um, we define this as patients who have an EDSS, that's our severity scale of six. So basically that means they can't walk 100 yards without significant assistance from a walking aid. And those patients who are already so disabled within five years of the disease, they have a more serious form of MS. Um, Again, that's not very common in only about 10% of patients, but it's probably interesting to kind of know what the spectrum the disease has and how differently it can affect patients in terms of severity and in terms of their symptoms. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a bit linked to the um, first question you asked, but very often patients just have sensory abnormalities as their first symptom. Um, and sometimes they don't even notice it and they, or they don't you know, take, take it very seriously because sometimes it gets better. So they just have a numbness of an arm and they know, they think, oh, this is just not normal, but then it just gets better. And, and they only think about it in hindsight when they're eventually diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and they think back and think, oh, probably that was the first symptom. So sensory abnormalities are very common. Um, 
I spoke already about the other symptoms which are common and those can occur, you know, visual symptoms, mobility problems. Those can occur as the first symptom in multiple sclerosis. I think it's really important to be aware that multiple sclerosis can also cause symptoms which you don't see. We call them kind of invisible symptoms and they're very common. So patients, for example, may feel much more tired than they used to do before they had the disease and they need to rest more. So it's important that they're aware of this because other people can't see it and they look after themselves. Some patients may find it more difficult to concentrate. Some patients may have, may have mood disturbances. You know, they may feel low because of their symptoms, because of the uncertainty of the disease. Um, sexual dysfunction, bladder problems, all of these symptoms um, can be symptoms which other people may not see. And so it's important to be aware of them. The doctor who looks after the patients to ask about them and helps the patient to treat those symptoms but also for the patient to know that this could be part of their disease. Because you have the, the brain is basically like a big computer um, organizing everything that happens in the body. And, um, and the nerves are cables which connect the body with the main computer system. So you can imagine if you have the dysfunction of the main computer, anything can happen. So any kind of symptom, can probably occur in multiple sclerosis. But as I said, common symptoms are these invisible symptoms. Some people have memory problems. Some people have walking problems. Some people have funny sensation, visual symptoms, speech symptoms. Anything can happen. And um, it's really important to see a neurologist who knows about the disease because some patients when you get the disease, it's like an unpredictable disease. You don't really know what will happen. And a lot of people are unsure whether their particular problem could, could be caused by multiple sclerosis or it's unrelated or something else. And so it's important to have a neurologist um, who really knows about the disease and who can examine the patients and who can reassure patients about their symptom and what it means in the context of their disease. So, um, it's, it's a broad question. It's difficult to say that anything can happen, but certain things which I already said are, are more common than other things. And often when you when one performs a neurological examination, then it's possible to put that into context and tell the patient exactly what it means and how it should be treated. So, Basically, in order to make a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, it is important to demonstrate that it is a disease which, that's what I said in the very beginning, which changes over time. So it's not just a once-off event, but things change. Um, and, you know, usually get worse, even though the patient may not necessarily always feel that, but it gets worse over time. So that's the first thing we have to demonstrate. And the second thing to demonstrate is to show that the areas of the nervous system affected is not just one area where you have recurrent symptoms, just the same symptom again and again, but at least two different areas in the nervous system are affected. So how do we see that and how we can diagnose this? So one easy way is to just see the patient clinically. If they have two different symptoms if affecting different parts of the nervous system over time, and it changes over time, then this is how multiple sclerosis used to be diagnosed in the olden days, um, to just see changes over time and two areas of the nervous system involved. And all you have to do is follow up the patient and examine them. So that's one possibility. However, nowadays, we can demonstrate that the inflammatory lesions in the brain occur when we do MRI scans. And when you do longitudinal MRI scans, you can see that those changes this information come and go. And the patient may not necessarily notice this. So it's very good to do an MRI scan to um, just make an early diagnosis, even if the patient may not notice that they have symptoms. So that's one test we often do. And the second test we often do is to do a lumbar puncture. What we can see in the lumbar puncture is some inflammation of the brain, which is generated in the brain. And when we see this, this lends support to 
the underlying pathology of multiple sclerosis that there's a kind of inflammatory process that is driven by the body that keeps happening in the brain. So most patients in summary, the most important thing is to do a clinical examination and to see their neurologist clinically. Um, but the clinical impression is supported by usually by doing an MRI scan, sometimes with contrast to look at the more recent lesions as opposed to the older lesions. Um, and to do a lumbar puncture, those are the main tests.